So I'd like to ask you some questions and maybe you could help us get some clarity on where we stand with everything. Um, so the first question is the one we always have, which is the question is, there's a whole bunch of people saying to eat a whole food plant-based diet. And this is conference is filled with them. And there's a whole bunch of smart credentialed people who are saying eat a keto or a paleo or a low carb diet and don't have processed foods and sugars and stuff like that, but definitely include grass fed beef and wild caught fish and eggs in your diet. And what is the evidence show? What is the science show for people who want to avoid disease? What does the science show regarding that diet versus a whole food plant-based diet? Go ahead, Pam, if you want to go first. Okay. Um, I think the first thing, uh, something we talk about at Wellness Forum often with our clients and members is the tyranny of the experts. In other words, um, this expert, that expert, this doctor says, that doctor says, there, there's no sense that can ever be made of this as long as that's the way the discussion goes. So you have to separate who's saying it and who's an expert. And you really have to look at the information underlying the question that you're asking, right? Because there are right and wrong answers to things, particularly if you apply some rules of evidence. And that's one of the things that I think has been our strength for the last three decades, which is it isn't just I found a study and let me tell you what it is. It's showing consumers how to read the medical literature to determine what's right and wrong. I think the short answer to your question is we can look around the world and see what is the right diet to eat. The Okinawan women, most of their diet is purple sweet potatoes, right? They're living on a plant-based diet, a starchy plant-based diet. And then you can look at the Maasai in uh, Africa. They live on a carnivore diet. Their average lifespan is their mid forties. So I guess if that's what you're looking for, it's a great diet to pick up. The keto diet, by the way, is very useful for a couple of things. You can keep a brain cancer patient alive for a long time um, that way, in some cases. It also works for epileptic children, but it's been used for a long time with epileptic children. And we have very good data on what happens to those children throughout their life. And they spend their whole life getting over the damaging, uh, the damage that's done from that diet. So, so it's the misapplication of the keto diet that's an issue here. So if you take a look at the evidence, it, it, it very strongly points to the longest life expectancy comes from eating a plant-centered diet. Where we depart a little bit is I, I've never told people it must be vegan. And I, I don't want that to become the thing that makes it not sustainable because a less than perfect diet sustained for 20 years is much better than a perfect diet sustained for six week periods and you can't hang on to it. So we've never taught a vegan diet, but plant-centered is it's just unquestionable. That's where the evidence points. And to go further with that, you know, when we look at just overall health parameters, so um, going back to the ketogenic diet, so at, in my practice, you know, a large percentage of my patients that I see are cancer patients. So they're kind of shifting in because of the concept of, which has been around there for a long, many decades of starving cancer cells, right? And the glucose and the Warburg effect and all these kind of cancer cell me metabolic functioning with diet and how we can control cancer growth or cell metabolism with diet, dietary choices. But what's happening is that when we see, like, and I was in one of the original uh, groups of people at John Hopkins in 2008, actually showing in the beginning, we thought, you know, well, hey, maybe we can kind of starve the cancer of of the excess glucose. And, and in these patients, and we had four different types of cancer, one was brain, one was colon, one was lung and breast, is that there was a reduction, for example, in the beginning of some of the tumor growth. And that's just because we we're cutting out all the excess ultra processed uh, highly refined carbohydrates so of course everybody will get better they'll lose some weight you know on a ketogenic diet the first what i call honeymoon period you know when you're not eating all you can eat you know breadsticks donuts and footlong subway sandwiches then yes there's going to be some you know that's that we shouldn't be eating that to begin with right but there was a little bit of a, a decrease but what happened was then in the study and this is what the industry took they took that little that little dip and then they they, they launched it out keto 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 but then we saw a plateau of the tumors and then we started to see an increase and then later on there were studies looking at well what was that what was causing that increase 
one of the things that, I, you know, I've been a, uh, an advocate or, or, or a kind of a promoter of looking at is like, well, maybe it's because they're shifting so much to a pro-inflammatory diet, lack of uh, a lot of antioxidants, no phytonutrients, no fiber pretty much. And, uh, you know, just a, just a high, you know, it's not a heavy nutrient dense diet, right? It was a highly, you know, just in a protein kind of rich diet, but it wasn't full of all the anti-cancer molecules, you know, like phytonutrients and antioxidants, and even the fiber supporting the microbiome. But it wasn't until just recently, and then, and actually that was in 2010, they did a study where once they put the animals completely in a ketogenic diet, it actually did show increase not only in growth of tumor after a period of time, because the cancer cell will actually switch its metabolic function to actually use the ketones as fuel, which was surprising to a lot of people. But more importantly, just last month, the data came out was that they discovered that the high, di the high intake of saturated fat in the diet actually triggers a, a receptor called CD36. And now we're actually starting to outline an, uh, the mechanism of what we call the metas metastasis of a cancer. And so actually, so on one level, yeah, cutting down some of these extraneous things can be beneficial short term, but it's not a long term benefit. And that's why we have to be shifting more towards what I consider a, you know, a plant based diet. And I, I totally agree with Pam on the ideas that you know, in my practice, I always tell my patients, I'm a risk reductionist, I'm not a perfectionist. Right. So the idea is that if I can get someone where their lipids are now completely under control, their A1C is good, their thyroid is good, all their in inflammatory markers, if we do a, you know, an autoimmune panel or an inflammatory panel, and they're all down to normal, then if they say, well, hey, you know, what about on the holiday or when I'm traveling or, hey, I'm going someplace and I want to go, I'm going to be, I'm not the one to judge on that. I'm, I, my goal is to reduce their risk of all the kind of most common top 10 diseases that we people die from like heart disease and cancer and stroke and you know all those other things and after that then again I, I think i totally agree with pam like to make things sustainable for people i think there's too much of these extremes and even there's extremes within each of these groups of the animal protein being super carnivore and then and the plant-based they're being sos or whatever or you know you can't have this or you can't have that or you can't have now it's going to be raw this is also kind of not realistically uh to be something that the average person could comply to or actually carry through. I'd like to make a comment. I, I think you're right about the keto diet not being a permanent fix for cancer patients, but there are some exceptions to the rule, number one. A study just came out, um, and I don't have it in front of me. I can get it for you if you'd like to see it, but this was on specifically glioblastoma. There was no question that the keto diet prolonged the life of those people uh, significantly by years compared to the non-keto diet. So I think there are specific applications where it does work long-term. I think part of the problem is the misapplication of it. If you have a breast tumor that's contained and it can be taken out, you don't need to be on a keto diet. I see a lot of people doing that sort of thing. It's it's like over-treatment, right? It's, it's over-treatment and it's not the appropriate match. The other thing is because that term keto has been thrown around so much, there are people claiming to eat a keto diet, but they really don't know if they're in ketosis or not. They're just living it up with fat. And that's an entirely different situation than a very carefully medically calibrated where you're measuring your ketones several times a day, because that's what you have to do with epileptic children. If you're going to, uh, to uh, make them former epileptics, and that happens a significant percentage of the time. So the rigor attached to this diet Diet. People need to think about it before they uh, go down that path. Make sure that they're candidates for it.